Well, hello, hello, hello again for you. Our topic today is polynomial equations and inequations, and our goal, I can use technology to assist us in solving polynomial word problems. Um, maybe that should say to assist me in solving polynomial uh, word problems. Um, this isn't really a new unit. I'm just going to go over a couple, or a new lesson. I'm going to go over a couple of examples of word problems. Um, and you may have even run across these in previous uh, sections. And I just want to go over a couple of them in case anybody had some difficulty. So we're going to go through a couple of examples. The first one here, example one, uh, the volume V in cubic centimeters of a block of ice that a sculptor uses to carve the wings of a dragon can be modeled by V at x equals 9x cubed plus 60x squared plus 249x, where x represents the thickness of the block in centimeters. What maximum thickness of wings can be carved from a block of ice with this particular volume? Okay, so... This one's fairly straightforward because we've been given an equation. We're given that v at x equals 9x cubed plus 60x squared plus 249x. 249x. Now, x represents the thickness of the block, and we want to find maximum thickness, the biggest thickness of the block. Um, and we've been given this other little piece of information. So here's the two things that are the most important here, is the equation and this other bit of information that says that the block of ice is 2,532. Uh, so that's our v at x. It's not x, it's volume. So V at X stands for volume. That doesn't look like volume at all. Let's try that again. Volume. So we're going to sub this 2,532 in for volume. So 2,532 equals 9X cubed plus 60X squared plus... 249x, and then in order to solve this, we need one side equal to zero. Same as if this were just a quadratic. It's not quadratic, it's cubic, but we need to get one side equal to zero. So I'm going to subtract this off both sides so that this side becomes zero, and this side is now 9x cubed plus 60x squared plus 249x minus 2,532. Now, I don't know about you, uh, but I don't like this 2,532 as far as the idea of using factor theorem. This thing has got to have a whole bunch of factors, and I do not want to start plugging stuff in. It's got a whole bunch of possibilities of being zeros. So that's why the title of this was Using Technology, because we're going to pull out some graphing software. So if you're at the school, you're going to take out a graphing calculator. If you're at home, you might want to pull up Desmos on your web browser. Now remember, the key to solving by graphing is the fact that we are going to graph the corresponding polynomial function, which means that I stick a y. Oop, I don't want to write with a highlighter. That was silly. Um, we stick a y where the 0 is, and then we're only really concerned when we actually graph the function. We don't care about all the points on there. We only care about the points where y is 0. In other words, the x-intercepts. So I'm going to pull up Desmos here, and... There we go, and I've already got it graphed here. I notice I've plugged in the y equals. Uh, and it looks like we've got one, and it looks like this is straight up and down. Um, uh, 4 seems to be an answer. Um, so I know uh, that one of my answers is 4. So we've got a 0 of 4, uh, and... It, we don't know if there's any other zeros here, um, but it looks pretty steep at 4. Uh, so I'm thinking this is going to be kind of a nice little um, 
just kind of a, look like a power function. Um, one nice thing about Desmos is you can start zooming out and see if you it starts to look like anything else. The only problem here when you zoom out is it zooms out both on the X and the Y scale. So if you keep going it just looks straight. So there's likely a little dip de doo in here somewhere um, to show that it's actually a cubic equation, uh, but we don't know where. So let's take a look at our function though. If I take a look at the function over here, one other thing I do know about this function is that the y-intercept, um, if I let x be 0, the y-intercept occurs at negative 2532. Uh, so I'm going to actually go into my settings and change the y values. I'm going to leave the x values at say uh, negative 100 to positive 100. And the y values I'm going to change to negative, let's go 10,000. So then I'll see that 2,500 there very clearly. So negative 10,000, oh, there's the little dip de doo to positive 10,000. So there we go. We can see that it isn't completely vertical when we um, start getting the bigger values. And here's the y-intercept, that negative 2,500 would be right in there. Um, it's looking like the only one we have, the only real value um, is 4. Now we could find the uh, complex ones uh, if we just graphed it, or if we divided out um, our factor uh, of x minus 4. Uh, but we don't really need to do that because all this asked us to do uh, was find the maximum thickness. And so since 4 is our only 0, the maximum thickness will be 4. So therefore, the max thickness will be 4 centimeters cubed. Now if we take a look at the question, make sure this makes sense, what is the what maximum thickness of wings can be carved from a block of ice with this volume? Well if the, it's this volume and we have this equation, um, this is the thickness of the block of ice, so the, the uh, wings can't be any thicker than the block of ice that we started with. Okay, now let's go to the next question, which is an open top box question. Uh, and I'm going to go through the setup of this open top box question. An open top box can be made from a sheet of aluminum. Here's my sheet of aluminum. Uh, measuring 50 centimeters, so it's 50 centimeters by 30 centimeters. And we cut congruent squares out of the side. So we take, and by congruent it means that they're all exactly the same. Now what's going to happen here is we're going to cut them out so we have the bottom here of the open top box will come from when I fold up those sides. And we don't know how thick the side is so we're going to let it be x by x. So when I fold up the sides like so, the height of those folds is x. And so we're folding up the sides from my open top box. Okay, So this thing folds into that thing. So now let's figure out dimensions here. Um, this whole length is 30 and I've got an x on both sides. So to get this in here it's going to be 30 but I have to subtract the x off of both sides minus 2x. So that's going to be the base of the box, 30 minus 2x. And across here the whole length is 50, but I'm folding up or I'm cutting out those corners, so this length in here, this dotted line here, is going to be 50 minus 2x, because I have an x both on this side and on this side. Now my height of course is going to be x because that's this length and when I fold it up it's still going to be x. So this length across here is 50 minus 2x. So write a polynomial function to represent the volume of the box and then use it to determine the dimensions that result in a volume greater than 40,000 or 4,000 centimeters cubed. So volume 
is length times width times height. And we should say, uh, give a let statement here and say let the uh, squares side length be x. Okay, so you should always have a let statement. Um, length times width times height. Well, here's length times width times the height of the box. I'm going to put the height of the box first. It doesn't matter what order you multiply in. 50 minus 2x times 30 minus 2x. Now there's a representation of volume. So we want to actually know when this volume is going to be greater than 40,000, or sorry, 4,000 cubic centimeters. So I want vol v at x to be greater than 44,000. I really want it to be greater than 40,000. Uh, 4,000 centimeters cubed. So we set it greater. x, 50 minus 2x times 30 minus 2x has to be bigger than 4,000 centimeters cubed. Now, we know that to solve this inequality, we're going to have to rearrange it and get one side equal to zero. So I'm going to subtract 4,000 on both sides. Geez, I said 4,000 that time. 50 minus 2x, 30 minus 2x, has to, minus 4,000 is greater than zero. Now I could expand this out, but I'd rather not. And if I'm using technology, it doesn't matter whether it's expanded because it can graph it with some... Uh, some factors, and these aren't factors of the whole thing, but it can graph it with some unsimplified stuff in there. Uh, so we're going to graph it. This time I'm going to use the graphing calculator um, so that when you're at school you know how to use the graphing calculator. So, so here's my version of the graphing calculator. Uh, and it always opens with the RAM cleared. I'm going to press Y equals and I'm going to just type this thing in and I'm only concerned when it's above zero. So X bracket 50 minus 2X bracket 30 minus 2X bracket minus 4000 and we're going to graph it. Oh, and we've got two pieces of it. Uh, now, I do want to see what this looks like a little bit better. So, what would our y-intercept be? Remember, I'm graphing this whole thing. Um, the, the function that I graphed was y equals uh, x times 50 minus 2x uh, times 30 minus 2x minus 4,000. So if I let x be 0, then this whole part disappears, and so my y-intercept is at negative 4,000. So that gives me some something to go on to set the window so that I might actually see something. So I'm going to keep this at negative 10 to positive 10 for my x's. So I've got negative 10 to start with and positive 10 to end with for x's. Um, my y's, I want it to go to at least negative 4,000, so I'm going to set this to negative 6,000. And let's go to positive 6,000 just for good measure. Let's see what this looks like. Oh, there's a nice little dip de doo It might come back up over here. So maybe I should extend it over. Um, it could come back up over here too, except that this has a positive leading coefficient. So it has to start down here and end up here. So I'm thinking that the little dip de doo is going to go over there. So let us take a look at the window settings again and I want to set my x max bigger. So I'm going to go down and I'm going to set my x max to 100. Let's see what that does. Oh, there I got it all. Now 100 was way big. Um, so let's go back in and set it to 50. And maybe I'll get a better look at it. Graph. There, that's pretty good. I um, can't really see a whole lot of what's going on here, but we can get the graphing calculator to find it for us. So I'm going to go second trace, and I want to find a zero, so I'm going to two. And the first thing we do is take our cursor 
and we put it on the left bound, or we put it on the zero I want to find. So I'm gonna go way over here. Woo do 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 Okay, that's the one I want to find. So left bound I have to go this way a couple clicks. Right bounds I have to go until I'm above it. Enter. And then I'm gonna go back to it, press enter. And it tells me that that is five. Okay, so that's my first one. X equals five. So this one would have been factorable. That's a really nice number. Um, the next one, second trace and two for zero. So I'm gonna go over to this one and left bound. So I go left of it a bit, enter. Right bound, right till I'm past it, enter. And then back to it, enter. And that is 7.19, 7.19. Probably we would have had to use the quadratic formula on part of that too. Uh, and then the last one, second trace, zero, which is number two, and I'm gonna go way over. Do, 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 Some elevator music for you there, do, 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 do. Okay, there we go. Uh, I'm on it, so left bound, couple clicks, enter, right bound until you're past it, enter, and then back to it, enter, and that says that it is 27.8. 27.8. So which value of x makes sense? Okay, 5, 7.19, or 27.8? Well, 27.8 makes no sense at all. Because if I subtract, if I take 30 and I subtract 2 times 27.8, then this dimension becomes negative. And that's no good. So that doesn't work. 7.19. Um, could be possible, and five could be possible. So these two things are possible dimensions. What was the question? Let's take a real close look at the question. Write a polynomial function and then use it to determine the dimensions that result in a volume greater than 44,000 centimeters cubed. Okay, so we're actually, we want a range of them. We know it can't be this, and it can't be anything bigger than this. So remember, we want it bigger than 40,000, so we want this bigger than zero. So let's pull that up again. We want an inequality, not just an equality. And since 27.8 is too big, this whole branch over here is too big. Um, that part of the function, these were the zeros. We know where all the zeros are. Um, and I'm gonna zoom in. I'm going to take the window and I'm going to go negative 1,000 to positive 1,000. See if we can see that a little bit better. Okay, we can see that little curve above there. That's the only place we want it is for that to be greater than zero is in that range. So it's got to be somewhere between these two things. So x has to lie in between 5 and 7.19. And if it is exactly equal to 5 or 7.19, then the, then it will be exactly equal to 4,000. And this wants it to be bigger than 4,000. So any value of x between 5 and 7.14 will give us, will give us a volume greater than 4,000. So we can say therefore, any value of x between 5 and 7.19 will result in a volume greater than 4,000. Cubic centimeters. Okay, so let's just take a rough sketch. This is what our function looked like. We're concerned where it's greater than zero, but all of these things, it's greater than zero over here, but those values of x are too big. It results in a negative volume, and that's no good. So what I really want is these ones right here, and I found those two 
intercepts um, right there to be 5 and 7.19. And that's it. Now there's a bunch of questions that I'm going to have you do. Some of them you may have actually looked at already, so this may be just reviewing stuff and hopefully helped you out a little bit.